I'm Krista Lidke, chef and owner of Boone Eat and Drink in Broat Modern German, right here in Sonoma County. Today, we're being joined by Adrian Chang and a beautiful lineup of amazing Japanese sake from Sake 107 in Petaluma. Sake 107 curates the most incredible Japanese sake that pairs just beautifully with their authentic Japanese cuisine. So stick around, because the more we drink, the more we dish. This is Beyond the Wine Glass. Adrian, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited you're here, and I'm excited to share sake with you. Because it's I know. not something I know a ton about. Um, but before we get into it, and we're gonna get into it soon, you're a cook, you're a food writer, you're a, a culinary instructor, you're kind of my neighbor, yeah. yet, yet we've not hung out. And uh, so you call the, the Redwoods of Occidental home. Yeah. What about living in this rural environment like speaks to you or influences the way in which you cook? Being in nature, being so close to nature, being so close to the coast, and also I'm, I was born in San Francisco, raised in Oakland, so I'm, I'm very familiar with this area, but there's something about the sacredness of the forests out here that really, that my husband and I really just, we're so drawn to, um, and, and, and it influences what we do in all the ways, because it's all about cooking with nature, cooking with the seasons, working with what grows naturally here, um, and then also, you know, working with just what is available as well. It's just. There's just so many wonderful things about this part of the country that is just so special. I can't really imagine being anywhere else. No, I know. And it's funny as a chef, too, I sort of like people are like, oh, like, what's your style of cooking? And I'm like, when you start with such good ingredients, you don't actually have to do a lot to them right. to make it taste amazing. It's exactly. just about, you know, curating this perfect mix and balance of what the season is giving us. Totally. Right? And that's California cooking. Yeah. You know what I mean? Indeed. So. So let's jump in with some sake. Okay. Um, the first one we're going to start off, uh, well, you pronounce it, but you're <laughs> terrible at this. I will do my best. Um, this is Hedorigawa. Jun, it's a Junmai. Um, junmai is kind of, my understanding of it is correct, is kind of like the most pure sake because the way that they polish the rice before it's made um, removes as much starch as possible. And Junmai is the one where it has the, as much starch uh, removed as possible. So you've got 70% of of it is actual rice, the heart of the rice grain. Wow. Um, and so this is probably going to be one of the better ones. And that, well, better is subjective. Yeah, I, so I think it's more about like what is the most pure in terms of the taste. So like super clean. Mm -hmm. let's, yeah. let's try this guy. Okay, sounds good. So cheers. Do, you, do we say a particular thing? Well, I'm Chinese, but in Japanese, in, you say kanpai. 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 Beautiful. Mm, that's nice. It's fruity. Mm-hmm. Mm. Ooh, there's um. It's almost like like a leche or something. I was Is that just where gonna you say that. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of like this um, like sweet graininess to it, which is lovely as well. So this is what I find amazing about you. Um, <laughs> just getting to know you. You started your career in fashion. Mm. Like what? was the moment at which you knew it was time to pivot and change? Like, what informed that for you? Um, so I'm, I was working in fashion in Tokyo, where I met my husband, and I was just trying, trying to hustle and make a career out of this industry. We started moving further and further out from the cities, and it wasn't until we moved to Sri Lanka, which is where we were before we came here, that we ended up living in an area that was just mostly just rice paddy fields. Um, and that was the area where we kind of felt like being close to nature was so much more important than the hustle of, of the careers that we were living, that, that, we were, um, that we were working in. Yeah, and, and so then, what, I know you're from the Bay Area, you mm, said you were born and raised here. What made you choose Sonoma County? Um, well, I, you know, being from the Bay Area, I had come up here quite a bit when we were kids and, and we happened upon Occidental accidentally when the agent was like, hey, there's this real fixer-upper up in this place called Occidental, which I'd never been to before. And she's like, I can show it to you if you want. And she took us out there and we found the place and it was just like love at first sight. It needed, needed and needs a lot of work, but that's kind of like the whole journey. Yeah. Um, but that's kind of how we ended up here. I knew already that it was so, that how much I was drawn to the natural beauty of this place. And that's why I suggested coming up here. It's, no, absolutely. it's all right here in Sonoma County, which absolutely. is really amazing. Um, Food, it's a cultural experience. Mm. 
Um, we know you're about celebrating heritage. You started cooking from a very early age, standing mm. on a step stool, I think, making <laughs> yeah. your first dishes in your kitchen with your family. Yeah. Like, what does it mean to cook for someone when, when you cook a meal for someone? Cooking a meal for somebody, especially in the comfort of your own home or at your own dinner table, is inviting somebody into your family, into your life, and inviting somebody open-heartedly into your history and the history of your family, that's what it means for me. Because so much, as you said, so much of what I do and what I cook stems from being inspired by my ancestors, by my elders and my family. Oh, so this is really interesting to me because we all have to remember, you know, we're talking about heritage mm -hmm. and telling the story. You and Chris live on Coast Miwok and Southern Pomo land. Yes. Um, tell me about the importance, the importance of the land for you guys and what that means as part of your journey and your storytelling. Well, I think, um, you know, acknowledging that we're living on, on stolen land, sacred stolen land that, you know, is sacred to all of us because it is just so beautiful. Um, that informs us in a way that teaches us that we need to be mindful and respectful of the place that we live and also to nurture it in a way that is beneficial to the ecosystem rather than try to make it suit what we want. And so what we do with Mori House is really trying to work more with the produce that either grows naturally here or thrives nat naturally well in Sonoma County. So, you know, local produce, but like without the use of like technology and things like that, um, it, it, it's really all about using what is available. And I think that's one of the things that makes Sonoma County so fantastic is because we're lucky there is so much available, but I think really what the significance of where we're living and our relationship with that is in reverence to it because it's not our land. Um, we're just privileged to be here. And um, that's really, I think, what it's about. We're going to jump into our second okay. sake. So tell oh, us a little bit about, I know, here we, here we go. <laughs> we're getting in it. So this is called Denshu. So a similar, similar concept that this would be, um, you know, considered one of the more purer forms because of the way that it's polished almost all the way down to the heart of the, of the rice grain. Kampai. Cheers, Kampai. It's got a um, hazelnutty kind of mm -hmm. quality to the aftertaste. I've not got a very sophisticated palate when it comes to this. No, but I get that. Like definitely nutty and almost a little bit more, like on the nose, I'm getting like a lot more like tropical fruit. Mm -hmm. It's So tell us about Mori House. This is this is like this is your baby, right? Yeah. Like this is what's this is what's happening for you right now. Well, we kind of touched on a lot of it. Mori House is really a celebration for my husband and I, really a celebration of our roots and our community and the earth through food. And it, and it and it and it talks about all of those really important values that we talked about before about the the history and the stories and then and the roots behind the food, but then also its relationship to the land depending on where you are, right? And so for us, it's really just a, a mechanism and celebration of living with the earth, living with the seasons, and doing it informed by our respective heritages and the communities from which we come, right? So I'm Asian American. So I grew up in an Asian com American community, which is made up of so many different, beautiful and diverse cultures that ultimately made me who I am, right? Um, not just my Chinese heritage. And then Chris as well is from um, England. He's from London, but Lo the UK is made up of loads of different um, cultures that to this day, in this day and age, seem quite the same and homogenized, yeah. but really they all have their own histories and their own, their own traditions and cultures. And that's something that he's really been delving deep into himself. Um, and so really, Mori House is a, is a journey, a personal journey for us, um, from which we have a series of offerings for anybody who wants to join us on this journey, be it through the, the blog, through our, our newsletter, and through hopefully through clothing one day, through our, our um, food stall pop-ups that we do in Occidental. So we're going to talk about, um, you have an amazing partnership with Radical Family Farms. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that collaboration. Leslie does what I do with farming, what I do with food. It's a reconnection to her heritage through farming. And that spoke to me on such a deep level. And, and what I was doing did for her as well. So we've got this kind of like kinship over how we've recreated these connections with our roots through through this really important form, which is food and, 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 and cooking. And so they have like a CSA. They do. And you do recipes mm -hmm. based on the products that they have yeah. in their CSA box. I mean, this yeah. is 
Wow. Um, it's, it's really fun because, you know, she, she, she actually does grow a lot of varieties of different vegetables so, uh, that, that, that I'm not familiar with. So she'll, she'll do things like cucumbers and carrots and potatoes for sure, but they'll all be Asian varieties, which is fantastic. So it, it kind of helps kind of bridge a connection with people who are unfamiliar with, with Asian vegetables or Asian cooking, you know, and, and, and those who, uh, you know, when they're not familiar with it. So it's a, it's a wonderful opportunity. And Leslie and Sarah are really the ones that brought us all together. So I think we have another sake. This oh, one God. I'm a little bit scared I by. I can feel my face getting warm. <laughs> it's called the uh, Demon Slayer. Yes, um, Onikoroshi. Let's, let's hear about your demons. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> no, you don't want to know about my demons. That's for the fifth sake, <laughs> which is off camera. <laughs> Um, so tell exactly. us about this one. Well, I, I, I am not, again, not familiar with this, but it is a Junmai Daiginjo. So Daiginjo... Say, say that one more time. Junmai Daiginjo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My understanding is that Daiginjo is not lesser quality, but has more of the rice starches okay. in it. So the flavor is going to be different. Um, I'm, I'm not sure in what way, because it depends on <laughs> these guys. But well, I'll if, tell it, you. if it's called Demon Slayer, then it's got to be pretty badass. <laughs> so it's Kanpai. Kanpai. Oh, quite different. Mm. It's sharper. Mm -hmm. More alcoholic. Yeah, I was gonna say almost <laughs> like maybe more um, like savory, kind of herbaceous yeah. than the other two, or mm. a little bit more fruity. I would say this probably would go really well with like yakiniku. Uh, I don't know if you know what yakiniku is, but it's like bless you. <laughs> no, <I'm kidding. laughs> yakiniku is like a. Kind of like, it's the Japanese version of, of, of Korean barbecue, mm. basically. Oh yeah, so we're so blessed to live here in Sonoma County. Mm. We have so many resources and all these things. Like, How has that informed a bit of what you and Chris are doing with your process? Um, it's actually really informed and changed it in so many ways. And I'm all for change, I'm all about evolution because we wake up every morning a different person, don't we, all of us. Um, but you know, when we, Chris and I lived in Asia is really when we did a lot of our kind of foundational training in cooking and it, we didn't do it through a, a, a cooking culinary school we did it through being invited to our friends mom's houses and, and learning how to do things the way that they did back in the day um which is the best training oh it's the best grandmas yeah. and moms man yeah. i'm serious it's the best food but um it was we were trained in a very culturally specific context mm -hmm. so coming here we were still in back to the states we were still in this mindset of like oh we're going to do things these traditional ways that these grandmas taught us, which is it, which is fantastic. But for myself, as again, for the Ama Asian American cooking aspect, it made me really think about like, well, now that we're here, how sustainable is it for me to go all the way to Ranch 99 mm -hmm. and 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 try to find all these really exotic vegetables, um, which probably were frozen first. Who knows where they came from? All well and good, but that's not how we want to eat. Um, and um, you know, we kind of just decided, I decided like, well, I'm going to kind of shake the food that I cook up a little bit and start, you know, using different ingredients that I would, you know, from what my grandfather might have normally used. Um, so for me, it's really changed the way that I look at how I approach heritage food. And that's why, again, I've kind of started coining this Asian American country food because I live in rural California um, with all this beautiful produce, not all of which really lends itself to the traditional way of thinking of Chinese food, but that's part of the fun. And that's part of the story of how Chinese food, specifically here, evolves depending on where we, where we, where we go. All right, so when you're entertaining, you have friends or family come to town. What's on the itinerary? Okay, um, well, a lot of hiking, for sure. Chris and I love Jenner, uh, Jenner Headland. Oh my God, my favorite. Love it, love it, love it, love it. I could do it every day. Um, yeah, a lot of going out in nature and being in the trees and just a lot of cooking and a lot of eating and a lot of a lot of drinking. <laughs> have you been out to the coast and harvested seaweed? Yes, we have. And yes. that's one of our that's one of our big things that we love and it's the connection to our again, our heritage as well, because my mom's side of the family is Teochu, uh, which is southern China on the east, and Chris is Welsh. Both have a really deep um, tradition of, of seaweed foraging. And so that's a big thing for us. So I just can't lucky. believe that like we can just drive on down to the coast and just go down there and be like, oh, here's for my dinner. Yep. You know? <laughs> it's just amazing. What's on the horizon for you? Like, mm. wh what are you working on? Any projects you want to share with us? The ones that I'm most proud of at the moment are our monthly newsletters because I basically write a 
a food and wellness newsletter with recipes and cultural musings um, that's according to the Chinese micro seasonal calendar. And it's the season where we honor our ancestors by making offerings. And so today is a really a big one today. So wow, I'm very grateful to be here on that day um, representing my people. But then I love that because, again, it's part of the journey. I'm learning something new every day by reading up, speaking to my mom, and hearing stories from her about how my grandparents used to live. And it's really about me incorporating all this old Chinese wisdom into my very American life, finding new ways of how that that story can really manifest itself. So that's one thing that I really love. And again, it's 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 so re recipes. New, yeah, so that's the newsletter. That's the newsletter. I've been doing awesome. that for a few months now. Well, since last end of last year. Awesome. I love it. And it's beautiful. I, I, I'm following you and just you. loving everything you guys are doing. So, thank so yeah, thank you for being my guest today. It's just been such a pleasure, a joy and an honor to learn about your heritage and your food and all things Adrian Chang. So thank you so much. Oh, thanks for sharing this space. Absolutely. Kampai. So I do want to thank uh, Saki 107 for the amazing sake today. It was delicious, but I mean, we are in wine country, so we want to finish strong. And I thought it was only appropriate. We have a heritage Zinfandel from Dry Creek Valley. Uh, so again, Adrian, cheers. You've been a wonderful guest. Um, thank you very much. This is Beyond the Wine Glass.